Okay. Good afternoon. Um, I, uh, my name is Rob DeVito, and uh, I'm going to start now because according to my clock, it's 2.30, and my clock here on my iPad is actually synchronized to the, uh, the official timekeeping in the United States. Um, and that's done by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, where I work. And so I'm going to be, I'm a, I stick to the rules, so I'm going to uh, stick to the, uh, the time here. So um, I, can, I want to first start off by saying I have never been more nervous in speaking to a group that I am right now because this is like a room full of heroes for me. I know I've known um, many of you through social media and seen your beautiful work. Um, been envious, been wanting to copy, been wanting to learn tips and tricks. And so that's what this meeting has really done for me in space. It's allowed me to uh, pick your brains. And so first of all, thank you for that. And second of all, please be gentle as I give this uh, give this presentation. Um, so this is going to be talking about how I use sketch notes at work, but rather than just be uh, I do this sketch note here, I do this sketch note here, which can be kind of boring. Um, I also want to pepper it with um, a little bit of, of some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. And though my job is specific to me, and you each have your own jobs and your own disciplines, I think there are a number of things here that may be useful um, uh, for you to use and also see how I use them as well. The one thing that we all share in common is we are all inundated with information. I think this is one of the key things that Mauro pointed out during his session this morning on the very sketch notes is uh, that we're inundated with lots of information. And it comes from all different areas, from the media, from books, from the reams of paper we get, or electronic mails we get from work, etc. And our success in whatever we do hinges critically on our ability to process that information. So the context of where I'm coming from is working at this organization called NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and we have this mission statement, which like any mission statement is exciting only to those perhaps who uh, work in that institution, but it's to promote U.S. innovation and industrial competitiveness by advancing measurements, science, standards, and technology in ways that enhance economic security and improve our way of life. But I would offer that there is another interpretation of that given by a former NIST director that really resonates with me. Um, if any of you folks are familiar with the old TV series called The Addams Family, there was a character in there, um, uh, Gomez, who was the father. His name was John Aston. His father was Alan Aston, and Alan Aston is a former director of the National Bureau of Standards, the predecessor of NIST. Sean Aston being the grandson, who was um, in uh, uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So, uh, anyway, um, he had this beautiful uh, he had this beautiful description of what it means to work in our organization. The staff believes, first of all, the importance of scientific research as a means of intellectual and spiritual advancement. It's the foundation of our technological economy um, and high standard of living, living, etc. But this is interesting for a scientist to say this. We believe that there is romance in precision measurement. When was the last time you heard somebody talk about a scientific topic in romance in the same in the same phrase? So we believe that there's precision in romance, or there's romance in precision measurement, and that ability to extend absolute accuracy of measurement by one decimal place frequently demands as much ingenuity, perseverance, and analytical competence as does the discovery of a new principle or effect in science. Those are our core values in the organization. Analytical competence. I work with some of the smartest people on the planet. Perseverance, ingenuity, these are all characteristics of people that I get to work with every day, and that's one of the reasons why I love my job. And so I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about my job, um, and, what, and in particular, this is the place that I work. So it's this series of buildings here. I'm the director of the NIST Center for Neutron Research. Maybe nothing at all to you, but essentially what we do is, we actually see stuff with subatomic particles, particles called neutrons, okay? So in the nucleus, there's protons and there's neutrons, and they have electrons whizzing around um, the atom. We actually take the neutrons and we see them with detectors after they bounce off of materials. So why in the world would somebody want to do that? 
because we can see features of materials at the atomic scale. We can see through metal, and we can see even see what magnetism looks like at the atomic scale. And those things all give rise to a really robust, robust research tool for studying superconductors, fuel cells for automobiles, pharmaceuticals. Um, one aspect of the research that uh, we've done is working towards making needles for injections even smaller. We're looking at formulations of drugs at the nanoscale. Biodegradable plastics, therapeutics for cancer, non-destructive tests on museum artifacts, it touches cultural heritage. So all of these multidisciplinary things here are what we touch. Safer jet fuel, now that I hear an airplane flying overhead, we actually have worked on safe, making safer jet fuel. Um, I'm not going to go into detail um, on this because what you probably are more interested in is the sketch noting aspect of this. But this, this diverse set of research is the reason why I started sketch noting. So in my job as director at this place, um, I have to deal with regulations, the federal acquisition regulations, nuclear regulatory agency regulations, um, policies from safety, security, tech transfer, publications, data access, uh, meetings, reviews, task forces, working groups, strategic planning, advisory committees. This is my life. This is what I do every single day, and it's a lot of administrative uh, stuff, okay? Um, and you can imagine it can be overwhelming, just the sheer magnitude of it. Um, but what got me hooked in the sketch notes was actually the science. Because realizing that I have all of this other stuff in my job that I have to contend with, um, it turns out pretty quickly, you need to figure out, just like I said at the top of this session, how to process that information. Because I have to, um, like you, you have to be able to have that information at your fingertips and ready to act on it and process, etc., and apply it. Okay, so I know this is small and you're not going to be able to see it, um, but that's like the worst thing a speaker can say. I know this is small and you're not going to be able to see it. Well, I'm going to talk to it, and if you're just in mind, you'll see it later. Um, so here's the gist of it. All of those areas of science were a source of frustration to me back in 2014 because I focused my attention on a very narrow area of research, and yet there were all these other things going on. Um, that I really didn't have a hard, solid grasp on. And um, so I would go to seminars and I'd be confused because they would be outside of my topic area. Perhaps you've seen a talk, or gone to a talk, where maybe after the first five, 10, or 15 minutes, you were sort of lost as to what was going on. That happened to me a lot, and it really annoyed me. Um, it annoyed me uh, because I was spending an hour of my time, or thereabouts, and much of it was just sort of fruitless. So I was looking for a way to be able to pick up information better. And so I did a search on Google, as everybody does whenever you're looking for something. Um, and what I came across was something called visual notes. And the first one that popped up for me was um, one by Michaela Lewis. It was, it was her sketch note that I saw for the first time. And I looked at it and I thought, this is like a billboard. It's like a visual billboard. You know, if you're driving along the highway, a billboard is a glance media. It's something that you can look at for two or three seconds and you immediately know what it's about. A sketch note for me was similar in the sense that I could look at the first sketch note and then others that I found online and pretty quickly know what the topic was about. It was a visual representation of information that I could grasp quickly and easily. And so I started wondering, is that something maybe that I could do myself? And so then I picked up um, Mike Brody's book, and then I read it, and I said, well, maybe I think I can do this. I tried some TED Talks, and I wasn't very good, but I committed myself to 30 days of nothing but doing sketch notes at work. Um, and so the 30 days of nothing but sketch notes at work, at the end of those 30 days, I had sketch notes of scientific publications, um, management meetings, safety incidents, um, policies and regulation, performance management, and of course some technical presentations. But this was doing sketch notes every single day. And believe me, 
the first couple of weeks were so hard and difficult. Just reflect back on your own experience the first time you did it. You probably weren't very happy with maybe the first one you did and the whole I can't draw, etc. But after 30 days, I started to develop a visual vocabulary. Um, I improved my rapid doodling in your own great. I improved my listening, better recall. I started to reread my notes, much more increased engagement and enhanced comprehension. And I have never stopped sketch noting since that back in 2014. There are, and one of the reasons for that is there are a lot of rewards for sketch noting. And so I want to share a few with them. So, uh, with you folks. So the first one is if you sketch note um, in a meeting, for example, so I'm talking any kind of a management meeting that I have to attend, um, the advantage is this. Um, it's my interpretation of what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing uh, in the discussion taking place. I'm getting down key points. I'm also getting hot button issues and putting my own commentary in on those hot button issues, okay? I, I get my thoughts on controversial matters. Um, it's easy to see that you care about the meeting content, and those who can't attend, um, who request your sketch notes, and this now happens quite often, they actually follow up. So that means they read your notes. Second, sketch noting science seminars. What are the rewards for that? I started getting a much better understanding of science outside of my discipline, um, much better recall, and I got conversational um, with, uh, with our users. So we're a user facility where I work, and we have scientists come from all over the world and spend a couple days doing experiments at our facility. And I go out around and I talk with them whenever they're here to do their experiments, and I ask them about the research is going, I ask them about the specific topics. This made me much more conversational. So I was able to get past the jargon um, of these things and be able to engage them. So it was outstanding user engagement. And it really shows users that you care, that you're not just, you know, yeah, it's nice to see you. Oh, no, tell me more about your research on thin film magnetism. That's something that's interesting to me. The presenter, so if you're, if you're sketching on somebody's technical talk, the presenter is very appreciative for two things. One, for the sketch note, they think it's really cool. And two, someone actually was paying attention. And many people snicker at that, but honest to goodness, doesn't it feel good when you know that people have listened to you when you've taken the time to make a presentation? You put a lot of effort in your research, you care about that. The fact that somebody else may care about that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, okay. Sketch noting science seminars to sketch noting scientific publications. Now, if I go and I go into the um, on the web and look at a physical review letter or a Nature or a Science article, um, I, I sketch note it as practice and also as a reference. So it's excellent prep for uh, preparing for a science seminar coming up, perhaps outside of your area. Better understanding, better recall. The artifact has very high reread value. I'll look at it again. I'll read it. The author is very appreciative, one, for the sketch note, and two, someone actually read their paper outside of the referees. Um, and it's outstanding for user engagement, and it shows users your care. And then the last one is something relatively new. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Altmetric, but in the academic world, publications, um, really, your academic record um, is sometimes uh, influenced by the impact of your publications. How many times have people read it? How many times have people cited it, downloaded it, things like that? These days, in addition to that, there's all metric data, which is social media. How many times did somebody see this on Facebook? How many times did somebody see this on Twitter, um, in Instagram, LinkedIn? And then finally, uh, the reward of giving a sketch note workshop to colleagues, which is something that I do to try and build the community at NIST. Workshops are fun. We all, I think we all agree with that. Um, it's fun to watch serious colleagues loosen up, and I work with some of the most serious colleagues. These are scientists and engineers, and to see them actually, you know, sort of break free and cut loose and do doodling, and it's pretty funny to, uh, it's pretty fun to see that happen. It builds uh, my visual vocabulary. It improves staff engagement when you have these workshops. Um, you can build a community um, in the workplace. And finally, this is the most important part. 
Because sketchnoting for me was a performance game changer, and I'm not using that phrase lightly, performance game changer, that's what it did for me in my career, um, you're empowering colleagues by sharing this with them. You're sharing this technique because I'm hoping that they even pick up a little bit of that and it's able to help them out. And that's really why I do workshops for my colleagues. A little diversion here. Um, so I discovered along the way while I was, um, while I learned about a sketch note, that I actually like to do a little bit of doodling and drawing that goes above and beyond. So for instance, yesterday I was really keen on being part of the urban sketching group. That's, that's a bit far, or it's a, it's a, it's a bit um, a step removed from sketchnoting and related. It's more artistic in a sense. Well, there is a Nobel Prize winner in physiology from 1906 that um, maybe you're familiar with, Santiago Ramon uh, Ijajal, and um, he uh, actually made some significant discoveries that are um, still used today. And he has this quote here, to labor according to the inclinations of the spirit is an incomparable pleasure and solace. I love this quote because this actually speaks directly to me in using sketch notes and drawing in my workplace. Because my labor is my work, but the inclination of my spirit is actually to be doing the visual communication, to teach others visual um, techniques. And so it absolutely is an incomparable pleasure and solace. Um, and so another aside, I highly recommend a book called The Beautiful Brain. And this is um, a book about him. And what he did was, in the course of his research, he really loved to draw. And so he would look at um, the, uh, the, neur the neurons, the cells, under a microscope, and he'd sketch them out all by hand. This book is a collection of all of those sketches, or many of the sketches, and it's a relatively accessible description of how the brain works. So I enjoyed it because I love the drawings. They're gorgeous. Um, they're, they're actually a lot like this. And also, I learned a bit more how the brain works. Okay, back from the aside. Now I want to give you some tips on sketch noting at work. And that's sort of small to see, so I'm going to blow this up a bit. So, um, over the years as I've been sketch noting, I've come across a number of um, things that uh, uh, have helped me with sketch noting at work. The first one is maintaining a sketch note go bag. A go bag is simply, um, if I have to run out to a meeting that either I forgot about from my calendar or something like that, I have something I can bring with me that will allow me to sketch note it. Um, so that can be either my tablet, the cables, etc., pens, a sketchbook, so I'm always ready. Second one, there's lots of opportunities to sketch note, but do you need to sketch note them all? During the, course of, uh, during the course of the day. What's useful to you for sketchnoting? So maybe a conversation between me and a colleague or a small meeting um, that's informal, it might not necessarily be the right place um, to sketchnote, or it might be, so you need to discern those opportunities. Sketchnote your next meeting. So this is a tip. If you happen to be in an organization and you attend meetings, sketchnote that meeting. By the way, these are tips that I give to the folks who are um, take my workshop as well. This was a big one early on for me. Oh my gosh, what if I get caught sketchnoting or doodling during a meeting? And this actually happened to me. And so know how to respond. And so I'll tell you what happened with me. Um, I get, a, I had one individual sitting next to me and she looked over and she was rather abrupt and she says, oh, you must not, um, you must be bored because you're doodling. And this was the first time I had ever been caught in a meeting uh, making a sketch note. And admittedly, I was um, a bit taken aback by that and I didn't know how to respond. At the end of the meeting, I, I finally gathered my thoughts and I pulled her aside. I said, hey, look, um, I just want you to know that this is actually the highest form of respect that I can pay to content because I'm focused on what I'm doing, this doodling um, in making these sketch notes. And I showed her what I had done in, in around there. In, um, I asked her, I said, do you understand? Because I wanted to make sure that she understood what was, and she did. She, uh, she says, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Turns out, she actually now sits next to me occasionally in meetings, and as a matter of fact, many people sit next to me in meetings, the different ones I go to, because they, they're sort of fascinated, as you all know, um, when you're going through it and making them. 
Um, oftentimes, I'll pre-populate a meeting if I have an agenda, a meeting sketch of with an, if I have an agenda beforehand, I can put those topics in. So I'll put the agenda item in, and then since I do a lot of them digitally, I can move them around for space. <clears throat> Capturing quotes and speech bubbles also adds a lot of flavor as well as information. And then know with whom you can share your sketch notes based on content sensitivity. So I attend a lot of meetings that are, we refer to them as inside baseball. And so um, you may not necessarily want to share those sketch notes with everybody. As a matter of fact, I think I show about a third of my sketch notes with the social media folks, um, just because all of the inside baseball uh, sketch notes are inside baseball. Um, next. You can share your uh, meeting sketch note uh, with the leader of the meeting. If you're leading a meeting, you can prepare a sketch note with the agenda items. Um, I even sketch meeting participants, and um, it's a form of meditation almost in focus. You know, we all aspire to get to this flow state um, when we're listening and trying to process information from your brain. Sometimes just doodling outlines of people for me personally. <laughs> Um, is a nice way to get into that flow state, to get into that meditative state where you're able, to, where I'm able to hear and process it um, with high fidelity. <coughs> Sketch up your next presentation and pre present that as your slide and hand out hard copies to the attendees. I took a little leap of faith two years ago when I went to uh, Munich for a meeting. It was a topical meeting of neutron backscatter and spectroscopy. Just as it sounds, it was a highly technical meeting, full of scientists, and I got to meet Morrow there when I was uh, when I was in town. Um, but I designed my my whole presentation is one big sketch note, and I used the software called Tour T A W E to go through each of the tour stops along my sketch note, and then. It was actually a symposium in honor of the father of this measurement technique, and I gave him a copy of it, and he was really jazzed, and he said, that's so much better than PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, <laughs> prepare your end of year accomplishments for your supervisor as a sketch note. Um, this was also a leap of faith for me. I did this a couple of years ago, and I've been doing it ever since. So my end of year and mid-year accomplishments, I'll actually show you an example of, uh, of one of my sketch notes for mid-year accomplishments. But I sent that to my supervisor. Within 10 minutes, he wrote, he wrote back an email message to me saying, uh, best period, mid-year period, ever period. Wow. Um, and don't feel that you must share your sketch notes with anyone else. First and foremost, uh, my sketch notes are for me. That's my whole approach. I do share a lot on social media for ones that are appropriate, but first and foremost, they're for me. Um, and feel free to summarize the meeting to someone who requests your sketch notes. So if somebody wants your sketch note of a meeting, oftentimes I won't give them the sketch note if, for instance, there's maybe a little bit more sensitivity in there that I want to share. So I'll just summarize, and it's easy to highlight a sketch note. And then my last one here that I want to um, mention is keep a sketchbook. So this one is sort of far removed from all of the other tips that I had out there. But this is one that I started in earnest this year was keeping a sketchbook. And so I want to speak to that um, explicitly. So there's this great quote that I came across um, reading a, a book about uh, keeping a daily journal, keeping a sketchbook. Um, a sketchbook is a laptop with no cables, ready and waiting to hold our sights and moments. And I thought that was a really cool way to look at it. You know, it sort of distinguishes itself from the digital there, and maybe um, for me it's a little bit of a step too far because I love drawing on my iPad using Procreate. Um, but there's a reason for that quote, and it's this. Through drawing, you experience things differently. I totally believe that. I mean, I think many of us experienced that yesterday during the urban sketching session when we were out there. We were experiencing place, um, we were experiencing people and community differently, not because we were going around with our cell phones snapping pictures everywhere, it was because we were actually drawing. We were sensing everything. A snapshot documents I was there. A drawing creates the memory of actually being there. I think that really says it all. So I've started doing this much more, keeping a sketchbook. 
And so I want to tell you why I keep the sketchbook and then a little bit about the what. What do I do? What do I use? So why? A sketchbook for me, so I'm giving you my opinion on why I use a sketchbook, um, it's a safe, place, a safe place to experiment and play. It's not something I have to share with anybody else. Um, there's no judgment in there other than me looking at it, but then again, it's a safe place for me, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be too hard on myself. I can explore ideas, trial and error. I can make mistakes, I learn from those mistakes. It's also a place for deliberate practice. I can take one thing that I find really hard to draw, and I can do it over and over and over again in there. And there's nobody judging me on that. I'm just looking at it, I'm trying to improve myself. You develop observational skills. I'm really keen on doing whole, this whole idea of blind contour drawing, where you look at the object and you're letting your hand do it. It looks really wonky at first, but when you start to get better at it, it starts to look kind of cool. It's personal, obviously. It allows you to capture a moment or a memory. It's also it, a, uh, it's a, a marker for being present. It helps nurture creativity, and I use it to brainstorm and develop different ideas. So for example, I had a whole idea here on how to make a digital newsletter that I just sort of sketched out in my book. Okay, so uh, some specifics about my journaling. I use a moleskin um, or perhaps a, a white term, um, 13 by 21 centimeters. My pens of choice are uh, the Sharpie pen, the Uniball old 207, E-line brush markers, brush markers from Neumann. Um, all those are great for the, for the nice paper that they have in these sketchbooks. And um, what I put in there are sketch notes, sketches, thumbnails, ideas, thoughts, quotes, doodles, travel experiences. I'm doing a lot of travel experiences um, these days. Um, and even food. I like how Mike Brody um, does his food experiences and puts, uh, puts them in his sketch notes. Um, and I also do things, I draw from observation and I draw from imagination. And so I do a lot of drawing from the imagination in there as well. Um, and more recently, uh, from observation. So just an example of a page from my sketchbook, this is the one I was mentioning where um, I was talking about developing a workflow for um, making a newsletter in Procreate and then making that digital. But you can see I'm all about drawing goofy characters. I love cartoons, I love drawing goofy characters. It just, this is not related to that. But for me, I've got a visual connection between that content and that goofy clown character. Um, I just like doing it. And so I'll put thought bubbles above some of them that actually relates to the content. So this guy is saying, I would like to figure out how to image map and put links in parts of, a, uh, parts of an image. And that is directly related to the content, but they're just goofy pictures. It's, it's how I think. I think in goofy faces. Sort of strange. <laughs> All right, so this is the part where I hope your eyes don't glaze over. I'm just going to cover a couple examples of sketch notes that I've done. The ones that I'm going to show you, I think, are nearly all digital. Um, so I told you that one of the first things that I wanted to uh, figure out was how to sketch note highly technical talks. The thing standing in my way was I didn't have the workflow. And we all know that for us to be effective with every single thing we do, we have to have an approach. Like urban sketching, your workflow is, is usually defined by drawing an outline, filling in detail, adding shade, shading. I mean, there's a construction aspect, a process aspect to everything. Same thing goes for me trying to figure out how am I going to sketch a, a talk that's outside of my area of expertise. I'm not going to, that would be a whole session for me to do that, but I sketch noted something that took me about a year or a year and a half to develop. That's, that, this is the fruits of my labor on how to do that. Okay, I give lots of tours at, uh, at the NIST Center for Neutron Research, and so um, we'll have uh, senators, congressmen, people from the administration come through, and so one of the things that I need to be able to do really well is tell a story. Because I don't want to say that we had researcher X come here, prepare a sample Y, measure it in the beam, and then they got the scattering pattern. Talk about boring. Who cares? Nobody cares about that. What they want to hear about is that researcher from the University of Oregon 
who told his postdoctoral student, go make this material in the laboratory and bring it back to me because we're going to set the world on fire for um, information technology. And shows me that sample and says it didn't turn out right. And I look at it and it's bright blue. But that bright blue is the first new blue pigment anybody has discovered in 200 years. Forget about solid state chemistry. Forget about information technology. You just discovered a new material that can be used to coat houses, to reflect heat off of it, to cool things down, that can be used in paintings, that can be used in art. That's a story. That's about science from serendipity. This is a sketch note I did to get the science right and to understand it for me. This sketch note makes that meaning to me so that when I'm going on a tour around the facility with somebody, I have this image in my head and I can explain as much or as little detail as the questions that they ask. Who gives them the sketch note? I don't give them the sketch note unless they ask. By the way, does anybody here have kids? Do any of your kids have crayons? All right. There's a new color crayon called um, Blutiful. Blutiful was inspired by this research, and this research was carried out in this. Some of the topics that are studied at the this Center for Neutron, Neutron Research are extremely esoteric and so far from uh, perhaps your everyday thinking. Um, and these are the things that I really get fired up about because to make meaning for that is the ultimate challenge for me. This is a sketch note where you can see the whole crux of what is up here in terms of the scientific basis and result are contained in this cartoon. Believe it or not, the science up here is in that cartoon. Because what they're seeing is a motion that looks like this, but it's really, really complicated. That's all I wanted to show is I can use a cool cartoon. <laughs> it goes up and down like that. All right. Um, we have students come to do research over the summer, both undergraduates and high school students, and they'll spend six to eight weeks, and they'll partner up with some of our researchers as mentors, and go actually glom onto some really heavy research projects, tough stuff. And we asked them to give a presentation at the end of the summer to summarize their experience. And so um, this was the first year I did this, but I sketch noted each of their talks, and there were six talks. Um, and so you can just see I had a grid layout up here. There's a title for each of them. I don't know if this conforms to the theory of sketch note, but um, I, think, I think there are some aspects that do. But the real thing that I wanted to show is I taught, these, I taught these high school students how to sketch note um, earlier in the summer, and one of them, she actually made a sketch note to document her whole research approach to the topic, and she showed that as part of, the, uh, as part of it, which was really cool. Um, I, did, uh, I did a tech transfer one. This is, this is a policy committee, okay? So policy committees, well, a policy committee is a meeting where there's not a lot of visuals. Let's just put it that way. So it was incumbent on me to make to make meaning of this and make it interesting to me. And so it turned out that this one actually got uh, stapled to a as an attachment to um, in a memo to the Under Secretary of Commerce. So there's actually a, a sketch note that's in an official document um, in the government somewhere. Um, we have advisory committee meetings, which are two town meetings, and so I usually make a graphic record of that on my, uh, my iPad. And so there's usually lots of different things, including panel discussions. And so I like to make cartoon um, representations of the, char of the characters. <laughs> of the individuals who are on the panel, shall we say. Um, and so straight out of Mike Brody's um, sketch note uh, uh, handbook, uh, doing the longer approach to that in terms of what their individual perspectives were works really well. Um, and these I do share with other people who, uh, who attend. But it's an opportunity to make lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of doodles that are relevant. So, for instance, risk management, the person on the high wire.
strategic plan. Um, so as the, the leader of this organization, it's my responsibility to both formulate and execute and get buy-in for a strategic plan for our organization. And I actually didn't think of it until last year to try a sketched out approach to strategic planning. And it actually codified and simplified things in a way that even I was surprised at having new sketch notes for so many other things before. And so I just figured, okay, I'm gonna have one central question for um, what our plan is. And I, I formulated that central question. And then all of the strategies are derived from that one, that one question. So it's how can we best provide our measurement capabilities to the US scientific community? It's a broad question. Four strategies to do that, uh, build and operate great instruments, provide a compromising service to our customers, provide neutrons into the future, so looking long to long view, and then provide, provide access to industry. These four things are what we focus all of our attention on, and so this one graphic actually just summarizes what we do. And we had some visitors from Australia who were um, wondering how we fit into our organization, these leaders, these leaders from the uh, Australian organization, and I shared this with them, and it was clear to them exactly how we do that because it was a visual representation of it. Note there really aren't any visual elements other than some arrows and containers. It's primarily words, but it works. At least it works for me, and that's really what matters to me. I sketch out books a lot. There's a great book by Chris Anderson, who's the head of TED. Um, called TED Talks, the official TED Guide for Public Speaking. I like these because I always remember what the take home message is and what the detail is. But I made this sketch note over the course of about two weeks as I read through the book. And it's a great exercise, but it's also great to have this reference afterwards. I think we all agree um, on that case. But again, there's very simple uh, stick figures in there. Okay. I promised I'd show you my end of year for end of year accomplishments. Actually, I should end of year accomplishments. At the end of year accomplishments, um, this one in particular is after that meeting that I went to in, in Munich, um, and I presented that sketch note presentation and also to um, to this guy who invented the uh, the technique. Um, I, so this is in my mid year review. Um, I put a quote in there from an email he sent me, which was, you have invented a new method of presentation of scientific and other results which outpasses a normal PowerPoint by light years. My congratulations. And that was from a guy from neutron scattering, from physics, um, who wasn't familiar with sketch notes. Um, but it was really cool to see that. And so why not put that in a mid-year review where you're getting evaluated by your boss? And so then there's, there's other things. So for example, um, when I gave a presentation on sketch noting to people at NIST, I represented it by these simple people figures. So really borrowing heavily from the sketch noting visual communication um, and putting those ingredients into a visual document that emphasizes different parts of performance. So I would argue this is a great way um, to uh, list your accomplishments that's much better than a very dry narrative or set of bullet points. Uh, just a couple things from my uh, sketchbook that I'll show you. So I, I put all different kinds of things in, in sketchbook, goofy characters, just as a meditation. Um, one final picture that I want to show uh, I want to show you. So Mike Rohde has this new sketchbook that he's been developing over the last couple of years. It's called the, the sketchbook idea book, sketchnote idea book. And he allowed me to test it out, test drive it, test different pens and things like that. And Mike, Clayton here has a copy. Yeah, he's holding it up. So Mike Brody wanted um, Mike and I to put this through its paces with all different kinds of pens and things. And so I think I was through it in about 30 days. Um, and the reason I was through it in about 30 days is because um, one of the other reasons why I picked up sketch, uh, sketching in a sketchbook so much this year um, was this is my mom, and she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer back last October. So I've been going back and forth to bring her to appointments and um, treatments and things like that. And so during those are long appointments typically, and so um, I would often just doodle and sketch and things like that. And so she got a big kick out of seeing some of the stuff that I was doing while she was, you know, having the treatment. So I really like that picture um, showing her. 
Um, okay, so that is the uh, that's the end of the formal part of my presentation. Um, but there are also a couple other folks here who I invited to say a few words about how they use sketchnotes in the workplace. And so Mark Bourguignon and Mauro Ticelli um, also uh, have some stuff that they wanted to share. But again, this is informal. Um, are there any questions before we move to Mark? Yes, Nicole. I'm always thinking about what you do in your job. But does the sketchnote include the work that you do even more enjoyable because it feels like that you have a lot of fun doing the sketch notes and it's got like all the fun humorous things. Thank you. You have just summarized the whole uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely correct. I I have a job that it is arguably extremely serious. Um, it's a scientific facility. I have to deal with safety and security, very technical topics in addition to that, um, personnel matters, things like that. Sketch notes, and in particular adding the comic elements to them for me, has made it joyful and playful and has also made me much better at my job because the, all the messages that I'm sketch noting are stickier. They stick much more with me, I have better recall, things like that. It's really worked wonders and it's made it like play. I mean, it's almost like play. It's fun. Yep. Yes? Um, Okay, so the, the question was, do I do sketch noting during my work time or during my uh, non-work time, for example? I mean, you can you work Okay, did it fit into my work time? Um, just about everything I showed you was done. No, because I actually did some like scientific publications. I don't do them too often during work time. I'll do them on the weekends or in the evenings. I'll, I'll work at them. Technical seminars, of course, meetings, of course, in the work time. Uh, personnel reviews, you know, also during the work time. So the majority is work time. And during work time, yes. So I get paid for it, yes. Just like I love my job, I get paid for it. It's true. <laughs> yes. Um, I love your work in translation, but okay. if it just comes back and I'm using it earlier, then I've seen it have a lot of time to also stimulate with all the creativity. So I'm not only in the introduction, but also in the creativity. But like all we know, for example, when you want to use the media, uh, how to plan to have it in one sheet. I mean, you start somewhere, but how do you know if you have enough space or you don't have a lot of space left? You have asked the most frequently asked question in every single sketch note workshop that um, I've given, and the answer is this. I love working to constraints, so I will automatically say at the outset, everything that I sketch note is going to be on this one sheet. So for the two-day meeting, I have an 11 by 17 inch sheet, so it's pretty big, this the canvas. And um, everything else is typically eight and a half by 11, so letter size, US letter size. So how do I make sure? I'm a clock watcher. So um, if, if it's a two hour meeting, it's still gonna be an eight and a half by 11 sheet. I'm gonna make sure that 30 minutes into it, I'm 25% of the way covered in my sheet. Okay, so, so that's, that's it. So, Whatever fraction of time I have um, left, I better have that fraction of space remaining. So it's working to pace. That's really the key to it, is working to pace. And I can take more questions, um, you know, at the, at the end of this as well. So, um, Mark, do you want to uh, show a couple things? Okay, great. Um, <laughs> so I am Marco Villon, I'm French and uh, I work inside a big company. I'm not a graphic recorder, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not paid for uh, my sketch notes. Even if I try to um, put sketch notes in my work in daily basis, and I would like to um, 
my job to become a proficient uh, like a master or something like that. So I will show you quickly some examples. Uh, It's a, it's a process. Uh, sketches are very, very, very uh, useful to uh, explain the process. So, we see characters, we see uh, typography, we see different uh, arrows for the flow. So, I use sketch note techniques uh, to, to explain the uh, task, to explain the uh, process. Uh, and uh, it's very efficient for, for people for the communication. What you can see is very simple. For the characters, it's, uh, it's not complicated. I think uh, in the classroom, everybody can, uh, can do that. I just add an element because it's a worker. People don't know this. A worker in a work office. The screen are very simple. It's a square. It's a, it's a truck. You have a plant. You have a flow. It's very, very, very simple. Another one. This one was made to uh, explain to the boss of my boss. We have a lack of resources in the team. <laughs> this is the first one. And this is the second one. I guess it's here. Yes. Where is the problem? <laughs> And now I will show you something. All the sketch notes you, you see uh, was made not in the uh, direct, but in uh, two steps. This is my first step. It's, it's a draft. Okay, I imagine and uh, um, I, um, I place all the elements of the page. Sometimes I read it once, twice. I take a picture with my iPad, and after uh, I do finally uh, the, the final result to see the form. This is this is the there. And uh, about characters. This one is for uh, official communication, so I take time to, to have a, a better a better effect. But most of the time, this is the kind of people that I go. Even if you don't understand French, I think you will see the, the arrow the flow of the, the sketch note. For instance, this is another example of draft. And this is the final result. This is almost marketing documents. No, no, no. I'm working in an IT department, so uh, it's, uh, it's my job. My job is to collect from the business uh, their request, and I try to translate it in uh, another way 
to um, <coughs> share, to share business and IT and understand each other. <laughs> so this was it was to explain uh, a mobile application. Okay, so first you are on site. You have, uh, this is uh, the figure why you use the application, the functionality of the application, what it happens after, and the action uh, um, performs uh, after. You have icons, you have features, you have all the elements of the station. You don't have to look uh, here, but for me, this is the same. There is the flow from the number. Yes, yes. And what is important, I found out uh, the, the visual is not enough. You have to add text, you have to add context, you have to tell the story around uh, the station. If you share this, if you don't know the context, you don't understand. So, last one, this is the draft. Then, you have the final menu. On this question, do you say you are a player in the special part of the IT? Yeah. And so you are kind of the role you have in your IT? Are you uh, something like a worker? Not to make a job. Because I was just talking here already talking with some people that they are really trying out in the HR mindset to write user stories mm -hmm. for the IT department with pictures. Because it is often a big problem in the IT field and the teams can't write really good user stories for us and how they should design uh, the software. Yeah, exactly. and I think pictures would help help this yeah. industry as well. Yeah, in fact, I am in the middle between the, the users, mm -hmm. the my users, the user, my users, and people from my team developers and the I try to translate mm -hmm. in both ways. There is also stitch notes. I know you will do that uh, as an additional load from your normal work. Uh, yeah. Is it recognized by your company or yeah. your company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to work on. Uh, I, I need to work uh, during my weekends to finish the stitch notes. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have enough time to work, uh, to, uh, to make it that work. And it's a bit thing that it's like that. And, uh, it's a tricky question. Yeah, it's a tricky question because it's just a shame. No, uh, I'm recognized as the sketch center of the company. So, okay. it's the first step. The second, uh, second step is uh, now uh, people from my company ask me to uh, go to seminar for the graphic recording. Even I make it exceptionally, uh, and um, I try to make it very, very easy. Uh,
Да, ой! Не го я. Грижи, ай, тъпът ю, ай, 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 Rated is uh, <laughs> is all secret stuff, no? Very no. secret. No, no. And, uh, okay. You don't have to <laughs> ask before because you should. No, no. no. Okay. No. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. okay. Uh, my sketch of the work is not really sketch art. I try to uh, with the forks and the brute force. I try to to drag stuff out of the system engineer, developer, IT people, very, very dry, okay, they just type, uh, they, they just type in. And we started to work with the visual, a lot of whiteboarding, okay. And I can, I can summarize my activity in three, three acronyms. Uh, the first two are from Ravia to this, which is now my president. First acronym is uh, shitty first draft. You know also the Newton's law of motion. Uh, first law, uh, if you are uh, 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 the quiet, the stay quiet until you get uh, you don't fall the key and you start. Shitty first draft. Just stop whining and start drawing. Take the people, stop. Yeah, but I have an idea. I explain. No, no, don't explain me. Show me, okay? Make people say, I see what you mean, okay? And uh, this is, yeah, but uh, if I try, no, this is the shitty first draft. This draft uh, start and die with the right to be discharged, okay? This work is the ship of the drug, no matter if it is wrong, okay? If it's wrong, it's a success, because you know exactly not what to do, okay? <coughs> it's the McDonald, uh, the McDonald technique, when the people met, in the evening, oh, what we got to eat? Mm, I don't know, maybe the pizzeria, I don't know. I, and I dropped the McDonald's bomb. Let me go to McDonald's. No, 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 rather than McDonald's, we go there. Okay, good for me. And we all go to the same direction, okay? It's just stimulating the, the idea. Second stage, add force, right? So you don't know, add force, acceleration. Get shit done. When you have the shitty first draft, don't stop there. It's not finished. The work is not finished. Get shit done. Remake it. Make in a beautiful way. Summarize. Create the real document. Okay? Add force. The people started. Okay, slowly. Ah, okay, I draw, I draw the draft. Okay, keeps the ball rolling. Push them. Add your expertise now in that moment. Okay, because your expertise as a visual practitioner <coughs> make the first draft a real tool for working. And the last power of the electronic, no more bullshit. Do every action correspond to uh, stuff like that? That the reaction, the more. You do them. The more you sketch on the board, the more the people will sketch on the board. Just make the first mark and then we we'll follow. In my experience, I had a lot of problems more, uh, more than other people. When you get caught, it happened all the time. And uh, my CEO and they uh, told me, follow, stop, group, that. I show you what. No. You can do that in the beginning, even if the right thing, I don't care. You can do that. And I had to stop uh, sketching during the, 
during the meeting. This was a fight. This was a uh, con. It was really, <coughs> really uh, a war. And then uh, my suggestion is when you get the first card, you do the right thing and you reorder anything. And uh, just build on your success. There is no the final success, okay? If you make your first presentation with one slide sketch note, and, uh, ah, okay, sketch not a work. No, start again, then another slide, and another slide, until at the end of the process you have all the presentation to the slide. And the next step is no slide at all. You draw on a whiteboard, very important topic, and you make your colleague come to you, bring a pen, make a mark, make a pen in the universe, okay? They need to make their mark. Once you get these three, these three steps, to me is just this. this. Sorry? Yes, I'll make the presentation available. I'll put a, when I get back next week, I'll put a link on uh, Twitter. So, uh, is there anybody here who doesn't know how to find me on Twitter? Raw underscore uh, You need to okay. the next. In the beginning, we have X proposition of X. Any other questions? Thank you so much for your attention. Really appreciate it.